Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. Today I'm going to be continuing my quick play AAR of the long campaign Stalingrad from the first expansion of the new game Stuka Leader from Dan Version Games, designed by Chuck Seeger. In the previous video, part one, we did a the campaign setup and we also did the first mission, which was a dogfight mission and was a victory, although we did lose a pilot. We lost uh, Krautner, who was flying an ME-110. He was shot down by a Yak-1. And we have replaced him um, because we got a... Because the target had both the keywords Horido and um, Pilot, we were able to recover the Horido that we spent. And we also were able to pick up a pilot. So I put that pilot in to the slot of... Uh, Krautner, and we chose Hauf, who's also in an ME-109. Here's Hauf. As you can see, he has a zeal. He has a 0 to 4 OK range with a plus 1 air to air and a plus 1 air to ground. So he's kind of a, what I would call a utility player if I were talking about like a sports, a sports analogy here. And that he can do air to air and air to ground um, at the same capability, essentially. He's not great at either one, but he's above average at both, which is pretty sweet. Now, of course, he does not have cool situational awareness or Harido. His plane has a minus one maneuverability that just goes part and parcel with an ME-110. But it does have a one for robust, so it is a little bit tougher to knock out of the sky, although not tough enough to save Krautner in the previous mission. So we are ready to begin. Let me move my dice tower out of the way. Uh, here you can see our current situation. We did not advance the recon track, so it's still on two. The intel track did move, so we we lose one site. So we will draw. Oh, and we also have an event card from last turn on the next mission. Add plus one to attack rolls against sites and bandits. So that's pretty useful, and we will be using that. We'll draw our first target card. And we get city defense, and this is a scramble. So scramble means you have to do it right away. Uh, you can't avoid it. We can take five aircraft. It's a scramble. We intercept. Uh, we have to destroy three heavy bombers. And the uh, if we don't manage to, to successfully complete this, then we lose one SO at the end of each mission. Honestly, I would have preferred to, get, to have gotten a, you know, an air-to-ground target here for the second mission since we literally just did a dogfight but this is um, a variation intercept is a variation on a dogfight so since it's a scramble we have to do it um, in the previous mission i think i said that we did have to do the dogfight but we actually did not have to do it ultimately i would have chosen to do it anyway because of the harido and pilot keywords so in this, in, in essence it, it didn't really make much difference um so here you see we have two bogeys at the target um, and one in the approach. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to place those. So three bogeys, three bombers that we have to take on. And this again has Horido or Pilot. The last one had Horido and Pilot. So at the end of this, I can either if I use any of my Horido, I can use this to recharge it, or I can add a Pilot if I would like to. Um, that may come down to being a decision based on where what we get at that point in the game so scramble have to do it intercept we need to destroy three heavy bombers the three bombers in this um the heavy bombers in this are the sb2 so we will be trying to shoot down three sb2 um bombers here you can see the bombers sb2 il2 the il2 the Sturmovik. that's a considered in this at least a medium bomber and the sb2 is the uh heavy bomber option so here's our target target nine and that is a, again a yellow circle target which means that we have to spend one fuel for each aircraft i think i might only take four because i feel like i need to uh conserve fuel and my there's three bandits and three bombers that we'll have to face in this and i do get a plus one to attack roll so it's a little bit risky to only go with four. I would probably leave Richter anyway because Richter came out of the last mission with one stress. Everybody else has no stress. So as this is day two, 
I will probably only take four of my fighters and I will, because I, you know, we don't know what the, what the next mission is going to bring. So we have to, we have to do this one. To start off, we draw our bogeys, two for the center, which are indeed bogeys. And then somehow we draw four straight no bogeys for the approaches, which is a first for me. I'll admit that much. We spend four fuel points for the target, which is a yellow target. That means it will give us one stress as well. And it leaves me with 18 fuel. We place our aircraft all at high altitude. Uh, Mulders and Lutz are in the east pre-approach, Jung in the northeast, and Half in the southeast. No ordinance is needed for this one because it's a straight air-to-air -air mission. We draw our target bound event card. Pay one SO and to add one to a chosen pilot's air-to-air -air and air-to-ground stats for the duration of this mission. So, okay, that's worthwhile, and we'll go ahead and do that. And I'll give the bonus to Lutz, who is a plus zero for air-to-air. There are a uh, plus one air to air and plus one air to ground counters that you can use when adding to a pilot's stats. Typically that happens when they score their fifth kill and uh, go up to an ace basically. We get to the intel site adjustment, but there are no sites in this one. So we move on and draw an over target event card. We gain one fuel barrel for every site and bandit you destroy. Well, we have two bandits. So if we shoot them both down, we can recover two of the four fuel I just had to expend for this mission. So I'll take that. And we go to turn one. There's nothing really to do here except movement. So we'll skip to the movement phase. We move our pilots first and then the enemies. The bombers need to escape off the east edge of the map. So they're going to move towards that always. And the escorts will jump out to attack our fighters. Now we move on to turn two where the real action will start. We will use the situational awareness of Melders to get him to jump out and attack in the fast phase. We draw the bogey and it's a newbie yak one with that nice tasty minus two attack rating. For his maneuver, Melders will go with the out of the sun. He rolls a D10, he rolls a 10. We get a plus one for his maneuvering, plus a plus three for his air to air rating. And then we add the minus two for a total of plus six on the roll. So that's an eight. And that results in a plus four attack and plus one positioning. The attack will then therefore get a plus a, a massive plus 10 DRM, which guarantees that this yak is toast. And it's another easy kill for Melders. Jung doesn't have situational awareness, so the bogey will get to attack as we move to the bandits and sights attack phase. It's a green yak one with that minus one attack rating that will be taking on Jung. The bogey rolls a 10 after the DRMs are applied. That's a half loop. And he rolls a five on his maneuvering roll and ends up with <laughs> a minus two positioning, which puts Jung on his tail and negates any chances of an attack. Now we go over to the slow pilot phase, and that means Jung gets to get his crack at this. He will go with the out of the sun maneuver as well. Note that that can only be used if you are neutral, advantaged, or tailing. And he rolls a 10 as well, and he gets a plus 3 DRM, which results in the plus 4, plus 1 combo. And then he rolls an 8 with, that, with a plus 5 modifier, and that's another kill. And there's no more escorts for the enemy. And so we go on to the movement, of, uh, movement phase of turn 2. Jung and Half move up into the center. The bombers continue to move east, so they move to the center. And we'll be waiting for them there because everyone moves to the center, including the enemy bombers, and we will go on to turn number three. This time Lutz will use his situational awareness to go in in the fast pilot phase, and he will jump right on one of those SB-2 bombers. So here's another thing. When you attack bombers, they can attack you between the maneuvering and attacking phases. But if you look at this bomber counter, you see that they have brackets, and they're not black brackets. Black brackets indicate turreted bombers like a B-17, while white indicates only rear gunners. So since we're attacking from a head-on or neutral position, the bombers can't shoot us back, so we get a clean attack run. So Lutz will use the end my sights on this one, and since only a two or less will cause us to change positioning, this seems like the obvious move. We roll another 10, and, I, you know, I don't believe that I keep rolling all these 10s, but I did. And that ends up being a plus four on the attack. 
The roll of five for the attack gets modded up to 11, and Lutz shoots down the bomber. Since the bombers are unable to attack in the bandits in sight phase, we go right to the slow phase, and Half will finally get in on the action. Now, Lutz can also attack again if we need him to, but we'll give the second attack for now to Jung. So Half will go in with his in my sights. He rolls an <laughs> another 10. And really, I know this probably looks hokey, but this is exactly the way this one was rolled out. So I'm getting great rolls on this one. That gives him the plus four. The attack roll is a six, and that gets modified to an 11, and that will destroy the second bomber. And that's the first victory for the new guy. And now Jung, same thing. Same 10 roll on the maneuver. I can't make this up. Really, I can't. So that's going to be a plus four, two, but just a two on the attack roll. And so we're going to need those DRMs here. The two plus two for his air to air and four for the attack. That equals eight, which is barely enough based on his firepower to send that final bomber spiraling to earth and ending our mission as a success. So this was kind of a cakewalk, uh, rolling a bunch of tens, drawing no bogeys um, for the approaches. That all really helped. And I'm... I kid you not, this was this was not staged. This is the way this actually rolled out. It probably seems like I staged the whole thing, but I did not. So we're going to go to the post mission. We gain three victory points, and we move the recon and intel tracks one each. We didn't need our Horido, so we will not uh, need to use that option. We will go with the new pilot, and I will select him in a bit. For our homebound event... Uh, we do have, to, and we do have to spend SO to avoid having our lowest ranked pilot suffer a minus two on all his rolls in the next mission. So I will spend that SO point. Here's our log update: Target number nine destroyed. Half does not have cool, so he's the only one who ends up with some stress on this one. Richter, who didn't fly on this one, he's going to go down to zero because he won't be flying today. Melders gets 2 XP for the mission, the same as everybody else, but because he's legendary and an ace, his get to be awarded to uh, someone else. We'll give him to Half to help him get, get caught up with his late start. So now we have three pilots with 4 XPs each, and hopefully we will be getting some promotions pretty soon. Target was destroyed, good for 3 points. We get a couple of fuel barrels for the two bandits we killed. We have 13 SOs remaining. And we'll need to select our pilot that we've just earned. And that's coming up. So we have no space for this new pilot on our log sheet. So I'm going to have to write him in on the back. We can take anything we want from the available planes for this campaign and get an average pilot. So the first question is, do we go with a bomber or a fighter pilot? And I decided that we're going to go with a bomber pilot and go with the Junkers 88 pilot Reichleitner. He's a plus two air to ground. He has a cool. The plane has four weight points and can carry the 500 kilogram bomb and the torpedo, which might come in handy if we end up drawing something um, target wise on the Volga River. He needs six to promote. And if he does make it to skilled, he'll add Horido and a second cool point. So I like him. A recon indicates that we can draw two target cards. The first one is a train target number 25. It's worth two victory points. We can use three pilots. We need four hits to destroy. Keywords include soft, minus one turn, and it is a secondary target possibility as well. At the start of our over target, we'll have to roll to see if this train is moving, which would make it a small target, or if it's stationary, in which case it adds a 20 millimeter sight to the target area. So this sounds interesting. We draw our second target, and it's number seven, uh, sorry, 37, photo recon which is also capped at three pilots. So that means only half of our boys will see action today. We need one hit to destroy. It will remove the recon track one if successful. It has one possible site and one, one possible bogey in each approach area as well as a bogey in the target area. It is also a secondary target with minus one turn. And we place the special opportunity photo site counter in the center area. We're going to elect to go with the photo recon first. We'll save the train for the secondary mission. I kind of need to do both so I can get those four victory points for the day and keep us on track. So now we will draw out potential sites, one for each approach. We get a light machine gun in the east. That's a low altitude only. Nothing in the north. A big old fat 85 millimeter AA gun in the west. 
which is high altitude and one we'd prefer to avoid in all likelihood. And in the south, we draw a second light machine gun, which is not too bad. And I can already sense that we're probably going to be coming in from the north. Next up is to assign our pilots. And with a bunch of potential bogeys, I want to use two fighters and one bomber on this one. The photo recon has to be low, so we're probably going to go with a Stuka as the bomber. And we'll use uh, Heitmeyer, our veteran. He's the, uh, he's the best Stuka jock we have. He's got Harido. He's got Zeal. He's got one cool. We'll probably load him out with three 250 kilogram bombs. Start high, dive over target, bomb. Take our picks and get it out of Dodge. Hopefully. Our two fighter pilots will be my favorite Melders and Richter. So we have an ace and a green pilot, and we're hoping to get Richter to promotion level and move him up to average. Ordinance-wise for Heitmeyer, as I mentioned, we'll take the three 250s, which cost us no SO points. We will draw our target-bound event card, and it is a good one. We get a free skill for zero SO, which is awesome. So we'll take Kampf Pilat and assign it to Richter. It adds plus one to gun attack rolls. And so we're going to try and pump up this green guy who is on his way to becoming average. So for plane placement, we're going to place everybody in the north pre-approach, all at high altitude. It's a four-turn target. We don't have any fuel barrels to remove for this one. So now it's time to determine our bogeys. We draw one for the target. No bogey for the target. One for each approach. Bogey in the east. Bogey in the north. Bogey in the west. And yep, bogey in the south. Well, the odds had to turn against us at some point, I guess. Now for our Intel air defense adjustment, we're going to remove that 85mm AA gun. No need to have that hanging around. Our over-target event card, another good one, which means we're really due for a bad one soon. But this time, any of my pilots who get shot down will return with two stress during the debriefing step. So that's a nice insurance policy. And I would have needed this on day one when we lost Krautner, but I didn't have it. So turn one, as usual, nothing but movement. All three of my guys are going to head to the north approach. The enemy bogeys will flow in there as well, except for the guy in the south who has to move to the center first. For turn two, we're going to use our situational awareness again for melders to see if we can improve our odds a bit and keep these Soviet fighters off of Heitmeyer's back. Melders facing an average Yak-9 will go with his favorite and mine, the Out of the Sun maneuver. Melders rolls a 2, which is normally a terrible roll, but he does have a plus 3 air to air and a plus 1 maneuvering, which modifies the roll to a 6, which is good enough to get us a plus 4 on the attack roll. And that roll is an 8, and I don't even really need to do the math on this one, but I did do it, and yes, that is another kill for Melders. And because he gets to go again in the slow phase, this will ensure that we keep the enemy off of Heitmeyer for this turn. Richter being green, he is sans SA, so we are going to go to the sight and bandits attack phase, and that means the bogeys get to attack, but they'll be required to take on Melders and Richter. Melders draws an average Yak-1, who rolls well and gets an in my sights maneuver, but he has a terrible roll there, resulting in losing one positioning, which leaves him disadvantaged, which is pretty much not where you want to be against Werner Melders. The second bogey ends up being a green Yak-1 with a minus one air to air, and he'll be attacking Richter. He ends up pulling a yo-yo maneuver and also ends up with a minus one positioning, negating any attack possibility, and we have a no harm, no foul from the enemy on this turn. Now we go to the slow phase, and Melders will employ the In My Sights maneuver. He rolls a 9, ends up with plus 4 for the attack. The attack roll is a 5, but that plus 3 air-to-air -air and plus 4 attack easily earn Melders yet another kill. Richter also goes within My Sights. He rolls a 5, modified by one, uh, modified it adds up to a plus 1 on the attack roll. And he rolls a 9 on the attack roll, which gets modified to a 13, and that is a kill too. The first kill for Richter. Movement phase, and we'll move into the target area. It's on to turn number 3, and it's prime time for Heitmeyer. He dives to low. We have no fast pilots. We do have a bandit who will attack, Melders. The bandit turns out to be an average Jack 1. 
A three on his maneuver roll results in a tight turn where he rolls a four that ends up being no effect. So he gets a neutral attack where he rolls a five that ends up being nothing. Slow pilot's phase. Heitmeyer's up. He'll use two of his three bombs, holding one back just in case we need to go again in turn four by some small chance. He does get his plus three air to ground and plus three dive, so that's a plus six. And he rolls a 10 and a five, both are hits. That kills the target and this mission is a success. He gets the, uh, he does get the photo recon because he is at low altitude over the target. Now we need to splash that last bogey before we head for home. So let's, let's go with Melders, of course. He's gonna use in my sights. He rolls a four, plus one for maneuvering, three for his air to air, that's an eight. That gives him a plus four in the attack, and that die roll is a three. And guess what? After DRM, that is another kill. So that's the end of the mission. We're going to move out and head for home. We'll draw our homebound event. We didn't need the event card we drew before. This one says save this card to remove one stress from each pilot in your squadron. Nice. We'll be holding on to that. So let's take a look at the log. Target number 37. No stress for anyone but Richter. And I missed this while shooting. That's why it says zero, but I will correct that. Everyone gets two XPs. Melders will give his two to Heitmeyer. We earn our two victory points and we move our recon track one. Richter has now reached his promotion threshold, so he's now going to move up to average. He's nothing special at average, but his stress range is now a nice zero to seven. And he does have a plus one out of air now. And he did pick up that Kampf Pilot skill thanks to the event earlier. So now we will move on to our secondary mission for day three, the train. Okay, so here's the target card. As you can see, we can bring three pilots on this mission. It takes four hits to destroy. It's got two, uh, two sites in the target area, one bogey, one possible bogey in each of the approach areas. It's worth two victory points, we'll move our track uh, recon track one, no imp no impact on the intel track. It's a soft target, okay? So there are munitions that can add one to the die roll. It's only a four turner. It is a secondary target. It is our second mission for this turn. At the start of our over target step, we're going to roll a d10. And if it's five or less, the train's rolling and it gains the small keyword. If it's six or more, the train's stationary. And instead we gain a plus... We gain a 20 millimeter sight in the target area. So there could be as many as three sites to deal with. Okay, so we're gonna draw two sites. And we get a light machine gun. And we get, so our special site indicator means I get to draw a random special site, which will have some kind of impact on the campaign or on the mission itself. I'm gonna draw one of these out. And we get photo, same and low, one recon. So we can get one recon out of this. Next step is to assign our pilots. So I will be sending Reich Leitner, the guy we just added a little bit ago, in his Junkers 88 because he's got a four weight, one robust, and a one cool. Plus he's got a plus two air to ground. And... Um, I'm probably going to spend a couple SO points buying the, uh, the AB250-2, 250 kilogram cluster bomb to drop on this train because it has a plus one die roll modifier for soft targets. So that's something to consider. So Reich Leitner will make his debut. I am also going to send, this is a little bit risky, but I'm going to send Hermann here with his newbie status to try and get him some uh, experience. So he's going to probably end up carrying three of the SC-250s because they don't cost anything. So I'm going to send Lutz along because he's got Horido and he's got SA. So he'll get to make an attack because we don't know. We could have as many as four bandits. I don't love the plus zero air to air. I mean, I really don't love that at all. He can carry a bomb, but he's not going to, because if you put a bomb on him, then he becomes a bomber and he can't initiate dogfighting and all that stuff. So I want him to be 
basically an escort. So he's an escort for this mission, and we're going to have two bombers. Next step is prepare for mission. So as I mentioned, we will buy two of the AB250s, these guys right here. You can see the S plus one. That indicates that they get a plus one DRM on, the, on a soft target, which this guy is. And two of our regular old S250 bombs, um, both of these needing a seven to hit. So those will be uh, carried by Reichleitner. Klein is going to carry three of the S250s. So just regular bombs for Klein. And uh, as I mentioned before, Lutz will be carrying nothing. So now we move to our uh, draw target bound event card. And we get gain one fuel barrel for each day in this campaign. Wow. So there are nine days in this campaign. So I'm going to gain nine fuel barrels. That's nice. Next, we place our aircraft on the board. Reich Leitner, Lutz, and Hermann all will start high. Reich Leitner and Lutz will stay high. Hermann will dive bomb the target and also hopefully will snap our photo for that recon. Fuel barrels. This is a yellow target, so we need to spend three. But we get nine back, giving us 26. Intel site adjustment. We get to remove one. And there's only one to remove. So that light machine gun goes bye-bye. We forgot to draw our bogeys, and we need to check for one in each approach area. We end up with three bogeys, one in the north, one in the east, and one in the south approaches. Next is our over-target event card draw. And it says, all pilots do not suffer stress for performing suppression. To be honest, I'm not really sure that'll be too useful on this one, but we have it in our pocket if we need it. We move the turn counter to turn one. As usual, there's really not much to do here, but we do have to determine the status of the train for this particular mission. Is it moving or not moving? So we roll our die, and it turns out the train is stationary, meaning that we get a 20 millimeter sight with which we'll have to contend. Movement phase, we move into the north approach, and the bogey from the east moves up, and the bogey from the south moves to the center area, and it's on to turn number two. No dive for Hermann yet. We'll use Lutz's situational awareness so that we can get a fast attack. We'll draw the uh, the bogey here. It's an average Yak-9, so no air-to-air -air adjustment for him. Lutz will go with the out-of-the-sun maneuver. He rolls a 4, which gets modified up to a 5. And that does him no favors as he becomes disadvantaged. Well done. The Yak-9 rolls. He gets a 9, which is modified to an 8 for a half loop maneuver. Then he rolls another 9, and then and that ends up putting him on Lutz's tail. And the attack roll, thankfully, is just a 4, which is lucky for Lutz as no damage is done. Now we'll go to the other bogey, which turns out to be a veteran Yak-1, getting a plus 1 air-to-air -air modifier. We'll roll to see which bomber he'll go after. Odds it'll be Reich Leitner, even Hermann, and it's even, so that turns out to be Hermann. He rolls a 10, and that ends up being an out of the sun, which is bad news. The 6 ends up giving him a plus 4 attack, plus 1 positioning, which is followed by an attack roll of 8, and that ends up being the death knell for poor Hermann as he is shot down. As for Lutz, He's tailed and needs to try to get out of that. So we're going to go with a barrel roll here. Roll a 9, which allows him to get back to neutral. And then he rolls another 9, which ends up shooting down the Yak. And that is the fourth kill for Lutz. And that is a much needed kill. So movement phase for turn 2. We're going to move Reich Leitner and Lutz into the center area. The enemy, of course, will follow as well. And so we go to turn number 3. No stukas means no dives. And we can't complete the photo recon as we no longer have anyone flying at low altitude. It also means the enemy 20 millimeter sight can't attack us because its altitude range is low. So no sights to attack, but the bandits of course will attack. Lutz will take on the veteran. The unknown bogey will take on Reich Leitner. It turns out to be a green yak one, so that helps a little bit. Lutz is attacked first. 
The bandit gets a three and a tight turn. He rolls an eight there to improve his position by one. The attack rolls a six, which gets modded up to an eight. That's a minor hit. We draw the chit. It's no effect, thankfully. Dodging a bullet there, pretty much literally. Now Reichleitner goes. He's under the gun, so he's about to be attacked. The bandit gives him a yo-yo maneuver, rolls a seven, which gives him a plus two positioning and plus two attack. Since Reichleitner's a bomber and he's fully laden, it's not like he can really maneuver himself out of a jam here. But now that the enemy has maneuvered, Reichleitner can fire because he is uh, he's tailed. And if a bomber is tailed or at a disadvantage, his uh, rear gunner can fire. So he's going to roll a nine, and there are no modifiers from his air to air or the fighter's robustness. And guess what? That's actually a kill. Reich Leitner's tail gunner shoots down the yak, and he gets a kill. You're not going to see that very often, I'm, I'm afraid. Uh, so now we go on to the slow pilot phase. And we'll let Reich Leitner drop his bombs first as a reward for shooting down that yak. So we're going to go with the two cluster bombs first, the AB-250s. We'll roll, we roll a 2 and a 5, but we also get to add Reich Leitner's air-to-ground rating, which is a plus 2. And the ordinance itself is a plus 1 versus soft. So that's a total of a plus 3 DRM, and that 7 becomes a 10, which is 2 hits. And the five becomes an eight, which is another hit. So we score three hits on our first two bombs. And now we just need one hit with those two SC-250s to finish off this train. We roll a four and a six. The DRM this time is just plus two because we didn't get that, um, you know, plus one from the cluster bombs. But that still turns that six into an eight, which makes it a hit. The fourth hit of the, of the uh, attack. And the target is destroyed. And Reichleitner is now the man of the hour. Now we just have to hope that Lutz can survive against that one remaining yak so we can get back to base without further damage. Lutz goes for the risky half loop to see if we can flip this situation, and he rolls a two. That's a massive fail there, and he's now tailed. Ugh. All right, so back to the movement phase. Both pilots are gonna boogie to the north, but that yak is gonna go right along with Lutz, and he remains tailed going into turn four. Because if you're tailed and you move, the bandit comes with you, and he remains in his current position. The Yak gets to take another crack at Lutz. Reich Leitner can't help out by suppressing because bombers can only suppress bandits that are attacking another bomber. Lutz does have Harido, but I'd prefer not to use it, so we'll see if it's necessary. The bandit rolls a five, which means he's pulling a yo-yo. The yo-yo rolls on the yo-yo roll, he gets a four. And that stays a four, so that's a minus one to his attack. His attack roll is a six, but it gets modded up to a nine, largely because he's he's tailing, and that is a major hit. So it looks like we might need that Harido after all, but it turns out to be a, sca a scalp wound, which we can see here because it has one star on it. That is a one-day wound. So I have a call to make here. Do I use my Harido or do I just risk it? Um, and I decide I'm going to risk it and save my Harido for a future mission. So now we'll need to check for a crash when we go for landing. But first we have to get our attack on the enemy in. This will be our last chance to, for him to shoot down this yak. He's, he's tailed, so the odds are not good. We're going to go with the barrel roll, and he gets a five, which is no help. He cannot attack, and the mission ends as we head for home. Now we pull our homebound event. And it says, if you get if you destroyed the target, choose two pilots to get one zeal each. Well, since we only have two pilots, Reich, Leitner, and Lutz both get our zeal counter. And now we'll roll to see if Lutz can get his 109 down on the uh, landing strip safely. He rolls a, if he rolls a three or less, he'll crash a four or higher and he will land safely. We roll a five and he makes it home. And that's going to wrap up this mission. We do get the two victory points for destroying the train. That also gives us a one on the recon track, so that'll move us one more to the right. We did not get the photo because we lost our only aircraft that was capable of going low. So speaking of that, we obviously lost Hermann. I'm going to put Reich Leitner in his spot on the log only because it's easier. Um, 
and I'm not going to buy a replacement for Hermann as that would cost me five SOs and I don't really know that it's worth it. So my bomber section is now going to be comprised of two Stukas, three Henschels, and one Junkers 88, which I am very glad to have at the moment. And so we're looking over the rest of the log, we see target 25 destroyed. We started with 13 SO. We spent two on those cluster bombs, which turned out to be a wise investment. Lutz has one stress and a one day wound. Reich Leitner has no stress due to being, uh, due to having one cool. I did mark down that Hermann was shot down, unfortunately for him. We get two XP for both Reich Leitner and Lutz. That's uh, four kills for Lutz now. One away from being an ace and getting to add plus one to his air to air or air to ground. I will probably go air to air. Reich Leitner gets two kills for the target and one for the yak. So he's at three. So he only needs a couple more himself to actually hit ace and he would get another plus one probably to his air to ground, I'm thinking. So as we wrap this up, we'll take a final look at the campaign map for this video. Our recon track is on the third box, so the next time we'll get three target cards. Intel is on the second box because it didn't move, but that's still a minus one sight. Target 16, 9, 37, and 25 have all been destroyed. There are still many left, but that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you, as always, for watching. It is much appreciated. My name is Joe, and this has been Hexed Encountered. Please consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing. And until next time, happy gaming.